Hello everyone, welcome to the John Roberts Gaming Channel. I have a small treat for you. I happen to rank up with fellow YouTuber, Chimo Chills. And at the time of this recording, Chimo Chills was ranked number one in the world in Axis, and I will be allies, so this will be quite the challenge, I think. It'll also be interesting, hopefully Chimo will publish his side. But I can't speak for him, I don't know what his plans are. But here it is, Chimo Chills versus John Roberts. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy. Chimo Chills. Chimo Chills, a very good player. You've seen me do it a hundred times before. I am not going to deviate from that. Especially not against... I think he's ranked top five right now. We can go check on that. His play has been impressive. I must admit, his luck has also been impressive, but luck is part of this game. If anybody's played this game, especially on tabletop, there are players out there that it's extremely difficult to defeat because of their luck. I'm not saying that Gmo is one of those players that just gets luck. I'm just saying that the dice gods seem to smile upon him. Or at least, or maybe I just feel that the dice gods don't smile upon me all that often. <laughs> Whatever it is, he's a very good player. This is going to be a difficult game. Let's see how we could do. I want at least average. Slightly above average would be good. If I get good results, I'll be happy. But it would be poetic if I just complained about the dice gods and they just said... Oh yeah? We'll see about that. Maybe making fun of the dice gods is actually better than uh, praying to them. Let's find out. Hurt their ego a little. Well, that's not bad. What does he get back? Well, he's already average. An average West Russia. Even though I consider that slightly above average for me. But the numbers say that that's average. Three hits is not great. What does he get back? He gets three hits back, so that's not great. Two more hits. Oh, well that makes up. That makes up a bit of ground. Where were those four hits last round? Not bad, though. Not bad. That's slightly above average. Again. So not bad. Let's do our typical moves. We'll put the AA guns, of course, on the front lines. Try to make it awkward for him. We'll place our two fighters accordingly. We'll put the sub in C-Zone 7. One unit in Szechuan. This unit, I usually put it in Russia. But you know what? Caucasus is not a bad spot. If you put it in Russia, it can get to Archangel and Vologda, but it doesn't need to go there. He's not getting into those uh, regions this round. And I'll have two infantry there and another infantry there. So I've been looking at that recently and I've been thinking maybe Caucasus gives you more options. Maybe. Let me know what you think about that. Let me hear your opinions. I usually leave one in Bariatia. I'm of the theory of leaving targets. I'm going to leave Burma, of course, for the Japanese. Not just abandoning that position. But that all looks good. And we mobilize, typically. The two tanks in 
Russia, the four infantry and Caucasus. Sorry, I kept calling this Caucasus. I meant Kazakh. You all know I meant Kazakh. I do that a lot in my videos. If you watch my videos, you're probably used to it. Um, he does have the possibility of sending one fighter against these two tanks. That really would be silly if he did that. So like I said, this one infantry, I don't think it needs to be in Russia. We've always put it in Russia, and I'm starting to second-guess that. Just a minor little detail. Just a minor little deviation in the opening round. Let's see what Germany has to say about that. All right, what happened on Germany's round one? I can already see that it looks annoying. Cheesy. You all know my favorite cheesy move by the Germans when it works. It is extremely cheesy. It usually doesn't work. And of course, here it had to work against someone who is ranked in the top 10. He has a cruiser up here. He has a battleship down here. Let's do our review. He did the 7 infantry bomber to artillery. To Karelia, lightly. Failed in Ukraine. I lost an anti aircraft. He lost five infantry, a tank, and a fighter. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's not bad at all. That is, uh. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, okay. Now here's an issue. He's got that sub in season 10. Right? He's got the cruiser left there. That worked out for him. This is where he used all his luck, I suppose. And he got the cruiser. And then his non-combat. Stacked up Poland. Germany, Bulgaria. Finland. Northwest Europe. Algeria. And he put the transport in C-Zone 8. That was probably actually... Smart of him. So let's see. Now, I'm going to want to take out the battleship with the United States. Which makes this annoying. Makes this very annoying. So what do we do with the two transports? All right. We're going to have to take out the battleship with the British. All right. No, no fleet this round then. Let's just do two fighters. Three infantry, and we'll just save two IPCs to help us fleet up next round. Now let's just go for the battleship. And then the two fighters plus two more fighters, there should be no chance of him getting. The UK, if he so dared, you'd be able to get two three four five six seven and i'll have two three four five six seven eight nine on there i suppose with the united states we could try with the destroyer and a fighter and use the bomber to get rid of the transport just to be extra sure but we'll we'll 
We'll light that firecracker when we get there. I think I will take out this transport with this destroyer. Um. Yeah. All right, let's take a look around. What did Japan do to us? Or what did they try to do to us? Or what did they fail at doing to us? They purchased two transports, one sub, and a fighter. That's an okay purchase. He destroyed the cruiser. He lost an aircraft carrier and a battleship doing it. Oh. Wow. Wow. Things are not going well for Chimo in this game. Uh, he did take back Borneo. And let's see, Japan won here in season 53. Very well. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five units left. So in 53, he destroyed everything and lost nothing. But that does mean that now I get to destroy this little fleet here. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to have to use the bomber. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to have to do it like that. That's a shame. Something that is nice is we still have this transport and we have a sub to take out this other transport. I like that. Not bad, not bad. Alright, he got the other cruiser. Did not lose his other battleship doing it. What the hell is wrong with my other cruiser? Come on, dice gods. Like, what kind of luck is that? That would have been nice, actually, if we could go for three in a row. My cruiser taking out a battleship and another unit. Because <laughs> if you remember, that happened in the last game. Uh, Yunnan, no units lost there. And he took Barrietia with no units lost there. Let's see all of his movements. There's French Indochina, Thailand. There's Wake Island with a bomber. He had to put his carrier in 53. I'm sure he didn't want to do that, but he had to. Two fighters in Manchuria, two fighters in Borneo. Uh, can't see that. There we are. One more sub. He's probably happy that he bought the sub. Put the fighter on Japan, the United States has this pesky submarine, pesky, pesky submarine. What do we want to buy? Probably the same as usual. We'll go with the aircraft carrier. We're going to get a destroyer. The two transports. 
And maybe I should get a sub. Maybe the U.S. should get one submarine. The thing is, if I get the submarine and then I'm able to eliminate the sub, and then on UK's round, I can get the cruiser. I don't know what he's going to do with the cruiser. What would be his attempt with the cruiser? I mean, I can't load up Season 10. Very interesting. Maybe we send the bomber at the cruiser. I don't want to spend money on a sub. I'd rather just save the six IPCs, so that's what we'll do. And we're going to have to take this risk. One bomber against one cruiser, one destroyer, and one fighter. Oh, but I need the bomber this way, don't I? Oh. Oh. He's also set up here with uh, the battleship, the destroyer, and the bomber here. Hmm. I think I gotta go for it. I think I gotta go for it. Not concerned about his sub. But he does have it to take as a casualty. Oh. If I don't go for the cruiser... Then I can't move my U.S. units into season 10. What a dilemma. What a dilemma. What does this say? What is this? This is... Implausible. Hmm... Damn it. No bueno. It's favorable now. It's actually less of a risk than the cruiser. Hmm. It's just so uncool. You know, if, if I don't... Let's just go with it this way. And I can actually load up a transport and bring it down to 23. One, two, three. Yes, where's the bomber? One, two, three, four, five, six. That don't work neither. Damn it. I'm going to risk this. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it. I have to go for this cruiser. Watch it not even work out anyway. Hold on, hold on. That would be three on three. No, it's four on three. Excuse me. This is five on three. So no. All right. All right. We're going to pray for this one. May the dice gods be with us. Please. It says that one's implausible too. Come on. First, we got to get this. We got to get this. We got to get it. Come on. Thank you. Please don't roll a one. <sighs> you can roll a two all day. That's fine. All right, this one. We need some hits. Come on. Give it to me. Two hits. What does he get back? One hit. Excellent. Because we can go one more time. Three more hits. Yes. 
He got two hits on the fighter there. That's okay, I think. I'm going to lose the two fighters. Because if I lose the two fighters, and then I have a destroyer and a battleship. Now he's got a battleship, a destroyer, and a bomber. He's going to try to come and get that with. Hmm... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know this sounds silly, but yeah. That's what I want to do. Use up that Pacific fleet to slow down Japan any way that we can. All right, cruiser, come on. Come on. Come on. Don't screw us on this one. There's the hit. Miss. Yes! Oh, I am so happy. I am so happy everything worked out. Take this transport over here. Right, this one, two, three, four, five, no. One, two, three, four. What if we take this cruiser? You could hit it with the bomber. Hmm. I could put the cruiser in 55. Land the bomber in the UK. Land this fighter in C-Zone 11. Now we can put these two transports in C-Zone 10. That makes me very happy. With some land units to go with it. Make sure we move you accordingly. Move you. Move you. Actually, put you up in Canada. Pull these forces out. Land that fighter in Persia. Yeah. Alright, I like it. I like it. I like it. Let's continue. We only have one fighter for this aircraft carrier, but... We can remedy that in the future. Two more transports. Yeah, we'll be fine. Okay, Soviet Union. Where are you? There you are. Let us purchase nine units. One of them being an artillery. Alright, so we're going to take Quang Tong. I always do that. It's a nice little maneuver. And let's do this and this. Just trade these two. It's a very nice, simple move. Where's the other fighter? There it is. Because I don't think there's anything else we need to do. You know, I'm not going to try and strafe this. He put the AA gun there. Pre presumably to, to try and prevent me from trying to strafe this. I, I don't think I would even be able to do it anyway. I think these two moves here work out. Right here, he's got one, two. I wouldn't be able to reach it anyway. He moved it in a place where I wouldn't be able to reach it. But he can bring one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It should be a, a fine defense. There should be no problem defending the UK 
if he goes for that. I don't think that would be very prudent of him. But it is something he can possibly do. It is something he can possibly do. I was not planning on losing two of the fighters. But yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. Let's take those two. Hell, the rush is done. No hit back. Oops. Went that one a little fast. Let's see. Oh. Okay. Do over. Oh. All right. Do it again. There it is. And there it is. Always. Always, always. You know, that when, when you miss three times in a row, you both always hit on the same round. Doesn't it feel that way? Or is it just me? Anyhow, we took the region, which is really the important thing. And I'm going to put the two fighters, put one in Moscow and one in Caucasus to give us a better, uh, you know, we could hit both sides. I'm going to pull these three tanks back into Caucasus. Replace it with one infantry. I'm going to put a second infantry in Kazakh there. And this infantry here, I'm going to put you in Novosibirsk. These three will come right back. We don't need anything in Archangel. In fact, I'm going to put two tanks in Novosibirsk. Just gives me more options. I don't need to defend anything right now. He can't reach me. He, all he could do is assault these three front line uh, regions. There's no point in putting the AA gun anywhere, though. He's got all these tanks. I'm, unless that gets him to use a tank. I don't know. No, no. We'll save it for now. We'll save it for now. We'll just leave it there uh, in West Russia where it can get to the front line. We have a tank here. We have a couple artillery. We have a few infantry. That should be good. That should be good. Because he's going to take Karelia back. He's probably going to try to take all three of these regions. That's what I would think he would do. Unless he goes for the sea lion. Let's hope that he doesn't. Let's make sure defense profiles for now. Yeah. I want Bomber first. What is Bomber first set like? It's got Bomber first, of course. Well, Bomber after aircraft artillery. And in the sea... Destroyer last. Submerge. That should be fine, right? That should be fine. We only have one destroyer. We don't have a fleet. We don't have subs. That should be fine. That's that's perfectly fine. I have this one sub, but it's alone anyway. It's not going to meet up with any other contingent, so. Yeah. It did get set. Yes, bomber first. That just makes the sea lion even more difficult for him. We sacrifice a U.S. bomber to protect it, if need be. All right. We'll put the artillery in Caucasus. Three of the infantry, the other five in Moscow. Let's see it, Chimo. Top 10 Axis player. So far, it does not look like we're doing too bad. And you know what? I've had a little luck. But he's also had a little luck. He has also had a little luck. So we both had a little bit of luck. 
maybe my luck here in Ukraine was the most significant piece of luck, perhaps. All right, what did Chimo do on his Germany round two? Look in the diary here. He six tanks and an infantry. That is very interesting. He's going to try and tank rush me. He is going to try and tank rush me. He stacked up Karelia with 15 units. I'm probably not going to hit him back there. Took Ukraine. Belarusia, they put an anti-aircraft gun in there. I'm probably not going to try and go for that either. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to hold West Russia. We'll count that up in a minute. Uh, there's Poland. Like I said, he put the anti-aircraft gun in Belarusia. Still has some aircraft here in Northwest, but I think we're going to be able to fleet up this round. He can hit Season 7 with 3, 4. Yeah, that's it. 4. In fact, let's see. 1, 2, 3. Do I want to try to get this Destroyer up here? Or maybe the Destroyer just goes to 12. Or 9. 9 might even be better. Well, no. Then 1, 2, 3. Hmm. Maybe we put it out in 12. Dare him to send the bomber. He's got three infantry in Baltic states. There's his six tanks and one infantry. So let's count this up. He has 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21... 22, 23, 24, 25 at the moment. That can hit West Russia. We got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And I honestly don't remember what he has. He has 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22, 23, 24, 25. Hmm. And we have another United Kingdom unit there. Maybe we can make something happen here. Maybe we can hit Belarusia. Maybe we can. I, I don't want to risk a, a, a Russian fighter, though. And I think with the Soviet Union, I got 31 IPCs. Probably going to buy a fighter with Soviet Union and I wouldn't want to spend money on a fighter and then end up just having two fighters anyway perhaps I could strafe it perhaps it would be a good strafing target to just send land units send these tanks and a couple infantry see if we can get rid of the AA gun and a few of his infantry and then pull back into West Russia that might actually be a good plan. Let's carry out UK's turn. We want an aircraft carrier and a destroyer. That'll give us one, two, three, four against four. What is a second destroyer? We could get a second destroyer. Then we have no transport. I don't want to use this U.S. destroyer to defend UK, but maybe we have to. Maybe we have to. Oh, that season 10 move. Yeah, I gotta get a, a transport. There's no point without a transport. 
No point in getting the fleet without the transport. So now if I put the fleet here, and then the destroyer comes here, and then this destroyer comes here, and then at least the United States can uh, land here. Maybe they could hit this if it's still there, try and strafe it or something. With four, five... One, two, three, four... I would have five... I don't know. Hmm. Well, let's just do it that way. Let's get an artillery. Because I need the transport. And if he goes after it... I would expect that he would lose some of his aircraft. And losing his aircraft will make his uh, tank blitz. But, and you know what? We will put the United States in France. We'll take France. Yeah, the United States will take France because I can't even take it with the UK. And then he's got to use his units to take it back. Yeah, so we'll put everything in Season 8 with this destroyer. I'm glad I, uh, you know took me like five minutes to notice that. Jeez. Let's see if we can get this Ukraine unit. One, two, three, four. What's it looking like here? He's got no threat on India, so we could do that. This sub, obviously, is going to take out that transport. Deprive him of that. This transport will probably go to, like, 31. There's nothing to do in Africa. These guys are just going to stay here for now. Hmm. So, yeah. Let's use two fighters in Ukraine. Land them both in West Russia. Make sure we get that transport. What is he doing? He's online. He is not watching us. I don't know what time zone he's in. I know he's up in Canada. From his accent, I think it's Eastern Canada, but I'm not sure. That looks good. We got it all strong. We got the hit. He does get a hit back, but that's okay. We got the unit. It's really the most important part. All right, season eight for you and season eight for you. You both go to West Russia. The destroyer, season eight. This infantry, up at the Caucasus, one more of these infantry in India into Persia. Let's move an infantry back. Let's see what he does. See if he advances or anything here. Don't forget this infantry. Need to bring that up. That's a very important. And this transport here. It's a shame I can't pick up this unit. I'll just bring you to 31. Or maybe I bring you to 35. Do you have a fighter or anything in range? 35 might be better. Because then I'm actually adjacent to a region that has units in it. Where is his bomber? One, two, three, four, five. Splash. No landing point. One, two, three, four, splash. No landing point. One, two, three, four, splash. No landing point. It looks good. It looks good. Is it actually good? We will find out. We will definitely find out. <laughs> Mm. 
Okay, destroyer, aircraft carrier, transport, three units for India. Let's see what Japan's got to say about that. All right, what were you up to? What did you do? Two infantry, one transport, an aircraft carrier, and an artillery. That's an interesting purchase, the aircraft carrier. He's lost both his aircraft carriers, okay. I don't think he needed one. I mean, I, I guess he doesn't know what I'm going to do, but I don't think he needed a, an aircraft carrier at this point. Just my opinion. Took some free land and some free land and some free land. Quang Tung. He got the sub. And he failed to take Burma. I always like seeing that. He lost an infantry. Very good, very good. The United States. What do we want to do on this round? We, we want to take France. We already discussed this. We'll take France. We'll help secure C-Zone 8. And since he has uh, is tank rushing, I'll have four American units here. I'll have four aircraft, but he'll only have two, three land units that could possibly get there. And really, if I had one or two more aircraft that can make it to uh northeast i'd probably attack northeast but i'm probably i'm just not even gonna bother I'm not gonna bother doing that well i'm not done with the review here am i what's wrong with me people what have i done we have to check out where he moved there's yunan he's got a sub lurking around here hopefully my uh transport is able to escape and see zone 60 with the two the two aircraft carriers, the two fighters with the one aircraft carrier. There he mobilized. We could see where he mobilized. Okay, let's get back to what we're doing with the US. So in total, he's got three, four, five aircraft. And that's it with the Germans. And we got one, two, three, four, five with the United States. So you know what? I'm going to get, we, we want to be autonomous here. Let us get another destroyer. Two more transports. That'll bring us up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven transports. And we have enough for eight land units. I think I'm only going to get seven. No, let's get the eight. Let's get all eight. Let's spend it all. And we're just going to take France. I think that's the best use of these units right now. With his uh, tank blitz that's going on here. And we'll go on a bombing raid. Take a shot at this... Uh, this Japanese unit here, this infantry. That's probably our move. It's not much, not much else for me to do here. Yeah, so let's see it. Don't shoot down my bomber, please. Thank you. Three is good. Anything two or over, I've always said this is 
is good in a bombing raid. It feels like a success. When you get one, it can kind of feel, eh. You tell yourself, oh, at least I didn't lose the bomber. A whiff. Oh, another whiff. Oh, another whiff. I hate these whiffs. Come on. And does he hit back? He does not. Excellent. That's very nice. We'll see a little income from that. So this fighter, what, what's his threat on India? Does he have a threat? One, two, three, four. No, he's got no threat on India. Put this fighter in Caucasus. Do the same with the bomber. And this infantry. Well, let's send this destroyer to C Zone 8 to shore that up. And then here we'll have aircraft carrier destroyer fighter if he wants to send his uh bomber against that let's check our u.s defenses united kingdom set on bomber first that was for the defense of uk we don't need that anymore let's put you back on main and what does mean i have to check it every time even though i made these profiles i have to check them every time because <laughs> I never remember. Yes, this is the one where aircraft carriers go first. That's what we want. Take these two from Mexico. Take these two transports. Let's put all four units there so that we have the capability of taking all four if we decide to. We probably won't, but... We'll see what happens. Get this cruiser into 18. Start bringing these guys over. We're going to need them. How's that looking? Looking pretty good. In my opinion. I have been wrong in the past. Put everything out of Washington. Send it over to Soviet Union. 